Hi everyone, welcome back to another high dynamic edition of PhotoWalk Pro Tutorials. My name is Jeff and today I'm going to show you how I actually finish off uh, some of my HDR images because they, you know, I get them in Photoshop, I make some adjustments, but there's a couple of steps that I do that really kind of give them that final look that I really want for them and I'm going to show you what those are. And it kind of involves some smoothing, not really smoothing, but uh, noise reduction, which really kind of smooths out some of the surfaces and then some sharpening on the end of it. So what I've got here is uh, my HDR file that I shot in the National Building Museum and I'm going to go ahead and I've made all my changes in Photomatix Pro which is where I am now for the tone mapping. I'm going to go ahead and process this image and I'm going to save that file to my desktop so I can bring it back into Photoshop. Now if you want to see how I actually apply my uh, image uh, tone mapping I invite you to go look at some of my older tutorials because I cover a lot of ground on Photomatix Pro and I think uh, you'll find a lot of useful things in there but today I'm just talking about finishing off the HDR image. So once this image is done right here uh, it's I'm gonna go ahead and save it and uh, it should be done in just a moment and then the process of working this in Photoshop I'm gonna save it as um, let me go ahead and desktop and I think I've already got one, I'm just going to replace this one right here. I'm going to save it as a 16-bit TIFF file, so when I open it in Photoshop, um, I'm going to go ahead and open it in Camera Raw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off right here because it actually allows me to open it in different applications, which is very cool. But I'm going to go ahead and turn off the open saved image width for right now. And just hit Save, I'm going to replace the one that's there. And then I'm going to jump over to Photoshop, and I'm just going to open that image now. Uh, okay, I've got two of them. Which one would it be? Uh, it doesn't really matter. Let me go up here and hit Camera Raw. Because that's the big thing is I want to open this TIFF image, but I want to open it in Camera Raw. Because I'm going to do some additional things to it where I'm going to now mess with the color and some of the shadows and highlights. I don't like to do that in Photomatix as much. I like to do the tone mapping uh, and really expand those shadows and such. But I don't like to finish that image in there, especially with the color, because the color controls in there can be a little overpowering. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some quick fixes on here. I'm going to bring my clarity up and I'm going to bring my blacks up because I always kind of like to start with my blacks. There we go. And maybe just make a little color temperature change here and maybe just a little recovery for those areas up top. And let's see, I'm going to pull the vibrance up just a little bit. There we go. All right, we're getting pretty close to being done. I'm just doing this really quickly. I would take a little more time uh, to do this on my own. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go, go ahead and take my sharpening up. And, of course, you know, to see the effect of the sharpening in Camera Raw, you actually have to be at 100%. Now, when I go to 100%, you can see in here there's actually some kind of nasty noise in there, but that's okay. This is just kind of a, a base sharpening for my image, and I'll do a finish sharpening when I get in there. So, um... The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mask out some of these flat areas in here that I don't want. I just want the, the sharpening to affect the edges. So if I hold down the Alt key and then slide the mask, I can actually see where that mask is being applied. So anything that's black in this image is not getting sharpening. So that's kind of a cool thing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to uh, my final or my full screen view here. And that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and open the image into Photoshop. And I'm using CS4. You can do this in CS3. Uh, it doesn't really matter uh, because this isn't really anything spectacular I'm going to do. Now, one of the things I am going to use is a, uh, a plugin that I really like and I highly recommend. And it's called Define. And so I'm going to use Define 2.0 right here. And it, it actually works really well in its automatic mode. This is made by Nick Software. And what it does is when it opens the image, it's going to go ahead and do an automatic profiling and you'll see right here um, see these little areas right here where it's got this little mark here, there's one here um, there's one up here and what those are are looking at different areas within your image and then assessing the amount of noise in that image and then applying its filtration to reduce the noise with trying not to reduce the sharpness of the image and it really does a beautiful job so if you look over here on the right side of the screen right over here, I'm going to point to it right here. If you look on the right side of the screen, you'll see that it is actually giving you a before and after kind of view so you can see how well it's doing its job. And, it, and actually right now, automatic is pretty good. 
Um, if it was too much, I'm not going to worry about it because it gives me an, uh, its own layer on top with that sharpness applied. So if it's a little too much, a little heavy handed, I can always go back in and drop the opacity of that layer back down and then it's going to give me just that amount of uh, noise reduction I need. And that's, you know, noise is usually one of those things in HDR images that is very hard to, uh, to get away from because defining those uh, the highlights and the shadows, if you don't use, especially if you don't use enough shots to really get them uh, covering all the, the different uh, shadow to highlight areas, you will get even more noise than if you sh say, I just use three images. If you use five or seven images, you'll actually have a lot less noise because there's a lot more image information for the tone mapping process to use. But anyway, let's go ahead and zoom out. And you can see here's the image now. And actually, let me go ahead and zoom back in for you here at 100%. And I'm going to turn, there's before and there's after. So let me, maybe you can see if I zoom in a little bit more. Uh, there's before and there's after. So you can see it eliminated a lot of noise. Now, what I would go back in is to use the clone and clean up some of this little harsh noise in here uh, just to get rid of that. But that's actually uh, a pretty small area. Uh, so it's not going to affect it too much. If I was going to make a print or something of this, I would definitely go back in and clean those up. So now that that's great, I'm just going to go ahead and flatten that layer down there. I, it looks pretty good to me. Everything looks nice. And it gives it a really, all the flat surfaces just get this really nice kind of soft, creamy look to them. And it really does enhance the, the, the view of the HDR. But the other thing is, you know, I look at these columns up here and I really want these to pop. I want them to be sharp. So what I'm going to do is duplicate my layer, a little Command J. Oh, maybe if I can not print it. But this? Command J. There we go. I've got a duplicate. I'm going to desaturate that layer. I'm just going to hit uh, Command, Shift, and U and desaturate it. Don't worry about, you know, a black and white conversion because that's not what this is for. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is go to Filter and then Other and then High Pass. And high pass kind of gives you this sort of embossed look to your image. And you have to kind of play with this to figure out where you're going to get the best sharpness. But as you can see, as I drop it down to basically almost zero here, you can see it's completely gray. And as I drag the radius back up, I start getting edge detail. And that edge detail is really what we want to accentuate by using this filter. And when I get it set to right about there, I think 4.1, that's about where I want for this one. Now, it's still has that look to, well, okay, Jeff, that looks kind of like embossed. It's not only really great. Well, the next step and final step is to choose a blend mode. And there's really three to choose from that's going to give you a varying amount of sharpness. Uh, the first one I'll show is uh, the overlay. An overlay gives a sharpness value that is kind of a medium. Okay, the lowest uh, sharpness value would be the um, soft light. So I just hit uh, Shift Plus on my Mac here and went to soft light. That's going to give you about the, the lowest level of sharpening with this effect. So you can see I'll turn it off and turn it back on. You can see it just kind of pops those edges there. But if you really want to move that sharpness up, uh, go down one more to hard light. And that's really going to give you a nice look to your edges. So there's before and there's after. And you can see I'm getting, like in this arch right here, you look at the detail that you get from before and after is just really amazing using that. And if it's, if it's a little too much, say that's you want it somewhere in between, it's on its own layer so you can back off the opacity just a little bit and dial in exactly where you want. Alright, so that's how I go about applying some finishing touches to my HDR images. If you have any questions, uh, pop on over to photowalkpro.com, drop me a line, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Otherwise, you have a great day. See you soon.